The word of the day today is Scientology, because Linkin Park singer Emily Armstrong's ties to Scientology have recently been exposed. Linkin Park has had one of the most monumental returns in rock and roll this year, with the inclusion of the announcement of their new lead singer, Emily Armstrong. Shortly after that announcement was made, a whole bunch of controversy was sparked up about Danny Masterson and Scientology. Today, those Scientology ties have been exposed by the Daily Beast in excruciating detail, but before I do, hey, hi, hello, welcome to the channel, my name is Dan Frampton, and normally I wouldn't just read an article for content, but in this case, this article is the content. This article is the entire story, and the Daily Beast just put this thing out, new Linkin Park singer's secret life as a hardcore Scientologist revealed. Daily Beast is typically a gossip rag, but they came through with some receipts. It says here, now the Daily Beast had pieced together just how deeply en masse she and her family are in the Church of Scientology, which said that our reporting about her journey had the reek of religious intolerance and ignorance. And yeah, they came out here and they got a bunch of documents that prove that Emily Armstrong has been with Scientology since she was about 11 years old. And the conditions have not been great. Scientology is a bad place. So I don't want to necessarily condemn Emily Armstrong right off the bat for being a Scientologist because as you're gonna learn, the conditions are not that great, especially if you're like a child of a member of the Sea Org, a high ranking member of the Sea Org, you just get placed in cockroach infested dorm rooms. It says here, by the time she was of elementary school age in the early 1990s, Armstrong lived in a Los Angeles dormitory for the Cadet Org, the children of the Sea Org. Scientology's innermost corpse of devoted staff former members told the Beast. Her time in the Cadet Org is partially recounted in The Bad Cadet, a memoir by ex-Scientologist Catherine Spolino, who was raised in the church at the same time as Armstrong. And then they include this typed out letter from L. Ron Hubbard that indicates that children aren't called children. Children are not children, people. They are cadets. Spolino's memoir uses pseudonyms of the people she grew up with, but multiple former Scientologists who were raised at the same facilities and are aware of the details of the book told Daily Beast that Ava is Armstrong in the book. In their elementary school years, Bellino and Armstrong were among the children housed in a four-story apartment complex called the Anthony Building, she said. Other former Scientologists have identified the building as church property. Children slept in three-tier bunk beds and cockroaches were everywhere in the bathroom, Spolino wrote. Zoe Woodcraft, another Scientologist who lived in the Anthony Building as a child in the 90s, said that the carpets were so old and smelly and were full of cockroaches. There was no proper bedding. Not one of us had a complete sheet set, blanket, and pillow. I slept without a pillow for many months. During the day, the kids of the LA dorm were taken several blocks away to the Apollo Training Academy, a Scientology-run elementary school named after one of church founders L. Ron Hubbard's original Sea Org ships. So you see there, the conditions aren't really that great as a kid in Scientology. They're really getting their hooks in you at a young age. They are learning how to control you at a young age. Age. It really is horrendous. And then we get another internal 1988 Scientology promotional flyer of the Cadet Org and the Apollo Training Academy. Here it is, all right here. Looks so very wholesome, doesn't it? Here she wrote, the children were trained in Scientology's paranoid ways, being made to write knowledge reports about one another that described bad behavior. They were also sent frequently to the L. Ron Hubbard Life Exhibition, Scientology's peculiar LA museum dedicated to its founder, according to Spolino. Now, knowledge reports are another very infamous thing that Scientology does. They make their members hell on the other members. And then all those secrets are kept cataloged and then held against you. And the fact that they're making children do it before they have the cognitive ability to understand what it is that they're doing is literally insane. Because the Sea Org parents worked so much, the children were tended to in groups by a caretaker, Spolino said. Most saw their moms on Saturday evening and Sunday morning. Several former church members told the LA Times 
in 1990 that youngsters have gone for days without a visit from their parents who believe that their work for the group is transcendent. And that's how this cult manipulates you into prioritizing the cult over your family. It really is some abhorrent behavior. The removal of children from their parents, the requirement that kids intensively study their leader's teachings at the expense of normal educational material, and their extreme regulation in often neglectful and abusive environments is, regrettably, typical of many cults. Then it shows a member of the Sea Org who walks outside the Church of Scientology with a banner that says, to join the Sea Org is the sensible thing to do. We got a little sailor just strutting away over here. Spolino's memories of Armstrong become much stronger later in their youth when they were moved to the Canyon Oaks Ranch or PAC Ranch, a former Sea Org run boarding school in Santa Clarita, northwest of LA. Armstrong, she says, arrived aged 11 and Spolino was shocked to learn she was yet to make rank in the cadet org. I guess I really don't want to be a cadet, she recalled a young Armstrong saying. I guess I just want to play guitar. Spolino suggested that she join the Sea Org's in-house band, but Armstrong seemed more keen on skateboarding. I bet once Ava studied L. Ron Hubbard's policy, she would change your mind, she added. However, Armstrong did go on to become a cadet. A copy of a 1999 issue of the Cadet Times, a newsletter for ranch cadets, contains a photo of Armstrong among children who completed their educational requirements and graduated to a cadet by that year when she turned 13. So in one sentence here, it says that Emily was not interested in becoming a cadet, but by the time she turned 13, she did indeed rank up as a cadet. And here it is, the Cadet Times, Volume 2, Issue 1. We go down. The following cadets have risen at least one grade level since October 1998. Everything is redacted other than the name Emily Armstrong. And here she is in this top picture over here amongst all these other cadets. And it is important to note that Emily Armstrong was there because her mom, Gail Armstrong, was a high-ranking member in the Sea Org. And then in this section of the article, it gets into the mother in high places, where it says there is no indication that Armstrong joined the Sea Org, but her mother, Gail, has held several prominent posts at the Office of Special Affairs, the Sea Org's most powerful arm. It was described by former Scientologist and actor Carmen Llewellyn in 2015 as a sophisticated intelligence agency. Their family is baked into this thing, but it is important to note that Emily Armstrong didn't join on her own volition. She was kind of there because of her powerful mom. And then living under that thumb of that kind of power inside of a cult that is just so controlling is a very scary thing. Emily's mom would rank up all the way to president of the Church of Scientology in California, where this letter proves that. Dear Mr. O'Brien, I am the president of the Church of Scientology, da 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 da. It has come to my attention that the FBI files often contain misleading and erroneous information about the Church of Scientology, da 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 da. Signed, Reverend Gail Armstrong. That's so nuts. And in Scientology Today, it has this beautiful picture of L. Ron Hubbard at the top. Gail Armstrong is listed as part of the editorial staff. Literally baked into the DNA of Scientology. It's like Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, and the Armstrongs. It's basically one thing. And they do not have a very high respect level for mental illness. In Volume 31, Issue 2 of Freedom, released on September 1999, an article by two authors partly blamed the 1998 Columbine Massacre on one of the perpetrators, Eric Harris, taking an antidepressant. The piece goes on to attribute other violence and murder committed by adolescents to Ritalin, Dextrogen, and Prozac. In the same edition, Gail, executive editor, herself laid blame for school partly on psychological conditioning, as well as medical professionals diagnosing children with conditions like ADHD. So these kinds of beliefs, like I was saying, are very baked into them foundationally. And Emily Armstrong has taken the place in a band of a guy who had mental struggle. It's craziness. In an issue of Freedom, Gail edited after the 2001 Trade Center attacks, the main feature claimed that Osama bin Laden had been goaded into 9-11 by his deputy, Dr. Turn using unknown psychiatric methods. So they really do tie mental illness and psychiatry to the most violent atrocities in humankind. It's really a false equivalence to the highest degree. It gets into more stuff about her mom, but that's all I want to cover about her for now. Then it gets into the alleged intimidation of Scientologist 
victim, which is kind of picking up the arc kind of where we know it to be today. While her mother was a high profile part of the church, Armstrong was relatively low key while pursuing a rock career as the front woman of Dead Sarah. But in September 2020, she publicly supported that 70s show star Danny Masterson, a Scientologist, at his trial where he was accused of three women. He was convicted of two women and sentenced to 30 years in prison. The third case ended in a hung jury. The former church member whose case ended in the hung jury alleged on the day after Armstrong was unveiled as the Lincoln Park singer that she came to the trial as a hardcore Scientologist and was part of a group intended to intimidate one of the two unnamed victims. Her husband, Cedric Bixler Zavala, echoed these allegations. So basically what I'm learning from this section here is that early on Emily was distant from Scientology didn't want to take it as seriously as her mom but then later in life is supporting other Scientologists even if she doesn't know that Danny is guilty at this point she is out there supporting another Scientologist therefore that tells me that Emily Armstrong was at least inside of that community in some capacity that community being a cult being Scientology and then Emily's response to that stuff was so bad like four little tiny sentences and didn't even address Scientology here she was just like Whoopsie doopsie, I do not condone this abuse. And then the article concludes with the question that we all have, well, is she a Scientologist? Tell us. It is unclear if Armstrong remains a member of the church. Of course, it is unclear. They're making it as unclear as possible, but a lifetime in the church has been proven through those documents. I can't imagine the mental and emotional minefield that it must be to navigate all of this. Linkin Park's management and record label both failed to respond to request for a comment on whether Armstrong remains a Scientologist and on her past in the church. The Church of Scientology declined to state whether she's a member, citing privacy concerns. Former members noted Scientology's practice of disconnection, disassociating family members and friends from former members as a key lever that keeps members silent. Yeah, the manipulation runs deep. They have serious control over you. I don't really want to get into David Miscavige, but you really don't want to draw the ire of that guy. So I don't necessarily blame Emily Armstrong for being silent and being kind of scared to speak up in that way. But it's also noted that she knows if she were to speak out that it's possible that she'd never be able to see her mother again. And that's a big threat. Then it also goes on to say if she does remain a Scientologist, its celebrity members are trained how to conduct publicly while avoiding any negative association with Scientology. So it's all being left so unclear on purpose. There's so much PR and marketing that goes into this that it just feels so inauthentic. So even if she's a Scientologist or not, all of this makes me extremely uncomfortable. I don't want to be a part of, in any capacity, what any of this actually is. You can all have it. This is a dark part of human existence that I just do not want to support or be around in any capacity. So I hope everybody is enjoying the new record and the tour and the new lineup. Just ignore everything that's going on in the real life and behind closed doors and just stay as ignorant as possible, I guess. And even if she's not in the church right now, which I don't believe, I do believe that she is still currently there, but if she wasn't, all that Scientology blood is still coursing through those veins. She's been programmed by one of the most evil cults in human history, which sucks and I hate it. So I'm gonna leave right now. Thank you so much for watching, really appreciate you. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I will reply to every comment left within the first three hours of uploading. Until my next upload, watch another upload, okay? Take care and have a good one.